Hey guys, so today I thought we'd take a quick look at this Ryobi 30 minute charger. This is the IntelliPort uh, technology one plus charger. It is the P117. It's 85 watts and this particular charger looks like it's nearly brand new. And if I plug it in, I know the caps are on there because the lights blinked a little bit when I plugged it in. That's a light on that same circuit and no light comes on here though and of course with no power light we're not getting any kind of battery um, recognition or anything of that nature so i just thought we'd um take it apart and let's see what we can find today hopefully it's something simple it looks so new we'll actually take these four um security t20s out we'll be right back Back now with those four screws removed, we see we have to remove the cord from being wound up there, being tucked away in there. The light guide, which goes like so. So there's no screws on this; it just lifts out. So, so there we go. I don't see anything obvious right off. Of course, we want to stay very, very clear of those caps. As mentioned in other videos, those. Even though it's been unplugged maybe a few minutes now, and we'll look at where those caps are on the board here, the input caps. They have dropped off at this point, but just always make sure, because sometimes they discharge pretty slowly. But our NTC and MOV looks good. Our fuse, of course, looks good. No doubt or chips um, obviously damaged. No bulging caps. Which, once again, at least it looks almost like it's brand new. Uh, really a nice looking board, really. And just remember the risk of dealing with mains voltages. And if you're not qualified to do so, then don't do it. So let me do the live checks and uh, maybe give you something to check on yours. And uh, hopefully you ain't got to do yours live. And yours can be cold or dead while you're doing your checks. And just always remember safety first. And as always, you're doing everything at your own risk. So be careful. So since we see nothing obvious, I'm going to do something that you may decide not to do if you're not trained for it. Um, I'm going to actually plug this up and work on this hot. If nothing else, for reference, um, we have to be very careful with mains voltage, of course. And so we watch my meter here. We see that it's 160, and we see that this one's also going to be 160. So these are in series, so across these we do have our... 325 volts DC across so you don't want to get across that but one thing I wanted to check is see since we're not getting our power light our power LED is not even coming on I want to look at my 5 volt logic signal our primary side I believe is good so I believe we can leave that part alone but while being very careful if we look down here we have a header it almost looks like a, a programming header, probably going to this on microprocessor here. And we know our power is going to be down here for the LEDs. That looks like one of those little crystals yep, for the microcontroller. That is X1. So we should have our 5 volts either in this area or here. And it's probably going through to both. So with my voltmeter here, while I still have it plugged in, Want to be very careful and check across. I am not getting a 5 volts across any of those pins. And it almost looks like it says 5 volt reset battery. So we should be getting 5 volts. If you can see that. We should be getting that 5 volts. Let's look at this cap here. Yeah, that's our 35 volts. So that's our secondary. So we actually are getting our 35 volts. And we should even be getting 35 volts to somewhere to regulate. We got a little small cap here. I don't have anything on that cap. Okay, so off camera I went through with this meter and I actually um, used my ESR meter. 
to go through and check all the caps, especially the large caps with it off. I actually have it back on and charged up now. But I had it off and I um, discharged the caps using my ESR meter. And I probably won't show it in the video because there was nothing to really show. They all show good. So no issue with the caps, no bulging, no physical leaking, and uh, no ESR um, issues on the, on the larger caps. So I still wonder, right here, I wonder if this cap here should be on the 5 volt bus, because we have one there as well. It's only getting 0.25. So if we look here, we have a transistor here and a smaller cap, which is probably 5 volts. I'm not 100% sure that this cap's not on the 5 volt bus. But we should, coming off the 35 volt, we should be stepping down. And we may be doing it here. That's probably just stepping it down. And this is probably our 5 volt regulator here, U3. I don't have schematics for none of this stuff. I usually mention that in my videos, and I still have people ask me for my schematics. I don't have any. If I ever draw up something, I'll share it with you, but I don't I don't have schematics. That's the whole point. This stuff's not really easily, uh, it's not made to easily work on because you don't have schematics. So if I can fix it, I'll definitely share a video with you. But in this case, I believe it is all in our, the DC to DC converter part of the circuit from the 35, maybe dropped in and dropped again to 5 volts. And as we suspect that our 5 volt rail should be here, that is a zero 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 or resistor right there and that bus is going or that trace rather is going straight over to that cap and that u3 so i believe we should be getting you know under 10 volts typically to, to this pin here without even looking it up we should be getting like 10 volts here and this should be probably ground and then it should be putting out five volts so something up here is not getting down and i'm getting one volt across this resistor which seems odd to me because i don't want to tell you wrong with this resistor r500 so with that is R500, then that's actually a half of an ohm. And I don't really know why I'll be getting a 1.2 voltage drop across. That would have to be a lot of current, if you know what I mean, to show uh, that, most, that much voltage drop across. It would actually be heating up, and it's not. So just the simple things you try to learn to look for, right? So we follow this. Yes, that is negative. So we're still getting nothing, of course, on our 5 volt rail. Nothing to the transistor. 0.25. I'm actually going to unplug this, and I'm going to own that resistor out. So back now, unplugged. And let's monitor our voltage after a few minutes here. We are getting down to very safe levels. Let's look at R71 here. Oh man, 570K. Wow, let me show you that again in case I didn't show a good clip of it. That is actually R71 here. It is R500. So I don't see any reason, as, you know, as far as I don't see any reason for it to be open, like burned up or... um any dark spots or this could have just been a manufacturing defect it's real close to your current sensing resistor there it looks like well that diode is coming off that diode there d21 so d21 comes over and hits that cap hits the top of that resistor and it goes back to the cap on the positive so what i do have is a 1r00 so I do have a one on, and since I have a, I have more than one, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. I'm going to use 
one on top of the other. So I'm going to put them in parallel. So I'm going to get my half on and I'm also going to have twice the capacity. I'm going to get my hot air gun out. We'll be right back. So back now I have my hot air gun uh, heating up. I'm going to put a little bit of flux around this resistor. Let's see, we can't remove it. Board holder is really nice. I have a video of putting these arms on it as well. It comes in handy sometimes. All right, good. We're off just that easy. And absolutely opened up. I'm going to clean these pads up and we'll be right back to put the new resistors back on. Place our one ohm resistor up here. Get a little hot air going on. And that actually has it in place. But that's just with a little bit of, um, just a touch of solder on the pads with a little bit of flux. So now I'm going to attempt to add the other one on top. And I'm going to use my soldering iron just to tap it, just to tack it on there. Sorry, it's going to be hard to, to stay out of the way here. But I'm going to try. That side looks really good. See if we can hit this side here. It's a tad bit more. There we go. Show that to you there. Hadn't cleaned it up yet, but that's what our resistors look like. What does it own here? Around the ohm minus 0.4. So there we go. I'm just going to clean this up with some alcohol and we'll be right back. The dark mark there is actually from my heat gun it looks like. It wasn't there before. I'm very satisfied with that so I'm going to move all this out of the way and clean this spot up and we'll be right back to power it up. I'm going to plug this up. You look at there, you can see that we got our power LED, the red LED, which is really, really awesome. So if it's that simple, that'll be a good fix. Well worth the time for that. I'm going to let this die off and we'll put it back together and see how it does. Before we put the screws in it, let's test it out. Awesome. And what we have here is this um this LED is slowly fading. I know it looks like pulse whip modulation on the on the camera because it's picking it up. My eye can just see a little bit of just a little bit of the flutter and it's, it's going out and back on, saying that it's charged. So this battery is actually charged. So here we go with another battery. Let's see if it'll start charging. And there we go. I've only had to work on one other charger like this. And I'll try to find some pictures of it that I've taken. And I'll try to have them up here on the screen. Just to show that it's a little bit different version. I realized after looking at the pictures it didn't even have the same resistor. So just, just so you know that all these chargers, even though they are P117, 
all P117s may not be exactly the same. On an older one, I had issues with the caps being bulged before and replaced them and I got it working. I didn't even make a video or post a video about that charger because the repair ended up being real similar to the old style um, charger that I repaired. So it was almost like a repeat. This one was different, so I'm going to post it. It may help somebody else. I don't know how common that failure is. It could have been just some fluke from the factory with that um, half ohm resistor. I've never seen one quite like that before, but maybe this will help somebody else. If you like this video today, look at this P117 Roby 30-minute uh, charger. Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.